Folks have obviously been excited about previous seasons of Texas A&M football, but 2015 has to be near the top of the list. A big reason why, right behind us, the newly renovated Kyle Field. So there will be excitement for what happens on the field, but also a lot of buzz about what's going on around the field. Welcome to Aggie Football 2015, a new excitement. Over the next 30 minutes, Aggie coaches and players will give you a little preview of what's to come this season with the offense, defense, and special teams. We will also go one-on-one -on -one with head coach Kevin Sumlin, and he could not be happier about his new college football palace. What a place, huh? This is uh, it's a great place. We, and we were able to get in here uh, last Saturday for the first time, and, and uh, like I said, I was the last guy out in the field. Players were here. We had SEC officials in here, and I knew it's impressive when I walk out there and I'm trying to get the officials' uh, attention and they're all looking up around. So hopefully we'll get the other team to be looking around the whole time. When they talked about the redevelopment of Kyle Field, you said, hey, I'm gonna ask you guys to do the impossible. I want you to make Kyle Field louder. How excited are you for the Ball State game to get in here and see how loud this place can be? Yeah, it's gonna be something else, you know, as loud as it used to be. Uh, we, we, we have eliminated, I think, the swain back and forth of, of, the, of the west side, but uh, uh, bringing, lowering the field and bringing uh, the, the, the fans closer is a great experience for not only them, but, but uh, should be a lot more intimidating for our opponents. It is going to be exciting for the home opener here against Ball State. We're going to talk X's and O's a little bit later on the show with you, but for now, Cody Coyle is going to take a look at the Aggie offense right after this break. Welcome back to Aggie Football 2015, a new excitement. The Aggies have finished at or near the top of most statistical categories during the Kevin Selman era. In fact, with two new position coaches and seven returning starters, this group feels they can be one of the best offenses Aggie Land has ever seen. Finishing fifth in the SEC in total offense and scoring offense a year ago wasn't quite good enough and changes were made at Texas A&M. Dave Christensen is the new offensive line coach and Aaron Moorhead takes over for new Kansas coach David Beatty as the wide receivers coach. Some say Moorhead's receivers group could be the best in the nation. A lot of talent. Uh, uh, I feel uh, the way we've been uh, going at it uh, this all or all this uh, count. I feel like we got the talent to uh, be the best receiver core. I mean, this is uh, as talented a group as I've, I've been around. And, you know, I've been around some really good players and some guys that are playing at the next level. Six of the top seven pass catchers from a year ago are back, led by junior Josh Reynolds, who came out of nowhere to break the Aggies single season receiving touchdown record with 13 last season. He was the most consistent player on the field last year, I thought, and still had some issues. I thought there was a couple times that, that he missed some plays that I think he could have made, but um, he's done a great job this camp of doing all the little things right. But defenses can't just focus on Reynolds. A senior Sabian Holmes, juniors Edward Pope and Boone Niederhofer, sophomores Ricky Seals-Jones and Speedy Noyle all return, plus the Aggies welcome heralded freshman Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk's a, a great young player, playing really well right now. He, he's, he's a guy that does everything right. Uh, outside right now, you know, Ed Pope and, and Damian Ratley and Jeremy Tavoy are playing good football. You know, those guys are battling for, for those backup spots outside. They're doing a great job. And inside, uh, Boone and, 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 and Sabian Holmes are playing great. And, and you just have to continue, again, to develop that mentality that if you're not going to do it well, we have guys behind you that will. The man distributing the ball in 2015 will be the one who finished 2014 as the starter, sophomore Kyle Allen. Allen held off freshman Kyler Murray and blend transfer Jake Hubenak to earn the starting job. Yeah, Kyle, ever, since the day he stepped foot on this campus, he, he's been a, a, a complete professional. You know, he, he's gotten better each day. He always does what we ask him to do. You know, he, he's kind of put on this leadership role now um, because, you know, we're a very young team. and. You know, he's our starting, he was our starting quarterback last year. It may be hard to keep a playmaker like Murray off the field during his first year on campus. Kyler is a, a, a very dynamic player. Um, the thing that's the most impressive with him, I think he's one of the fastest guys on our team, and he, can, he has an ability to, to make plays um, with his feet, especially when, when things break down, if you have protection issues or, 
or just a busted assignment, you know, that kid is able to keep the play alive and, and do some special things. Trey Carson is the established starting running back and looking to improve on his 581-yard, five-touchdown junior campaign. It just means I have to work harder, you know, and come out ready to play, and I know um, they're depending on me to make plays, and I'm going to be able to do it for them. He's played in big games for us. He's been around here, you know, for the last four years. He understands the offense. He understands the expectations. Uh, and his teammates believe him, they believe in him, and they trust him. Sophomore James White will also get his share of carries. He's improved his confidence. He just needs to continue to believe in himself. He has a really, really good skill set. It is full speed! Without the big men up front, there's no chance to make big plays. And one of Dave Christensen's main focuses is making the Aggies a more powerful running team. You know, we'll schematically do things to get our five offensive linemen blocking the five most dangerous. There's times when there's going to be seven guys in the box. The key for us is to get on the, the five most dangerous guys, and, and then you have a chance still to get yards on those plays. Senior Mike Matthews is back at center. Jermaine Fetty will play right tackle, and Juco transfer Avery Genesee will protect the blindsided left tackle. You can pencil in senior Joseph Cheek and freshman Keaton Sutherland in as starting guards. Uh, we're going to be really good. We got, um, you know, we have two new guys coming in, but, um, man, they've done really well for us so far. Uh, the offensive line's been clicking really well. Our run game's coming together really well these last couple of days. We've been really running the ball nicely. We have more depth than we've had, you know. There's been times we've had, we've only had eight, nine deep, you know, but now, you know, we have, we go, 15, we have 15 guys that, that can go in there and step up when anything happens. The Yankees have not utilized the tight end too much over the past few years, but that could change with freshman Jordan Davis and veterans Brandon Alexander and Caden Smith all looking to make an impact. Caden's the ultimate fullback and has really bought into that role like Ben Compton was last year, Did a has done a really good job in the box blocking. Uh, B.A. on the other hand, Brandon Alexander, has been very athletic in space and those things. Then enters Jordan Davis, who was a top recruit for us, that came in mid-year. Uh, we used him in every phase as a receiver, as an attached tight end, and as a fullback to, uh, off the ball. We now know what he does well. So we're starting to see what we need to see. Welcome back to Aggie Football 2015, a new excitement. Over the years, Kyle Field has been the home to some great defenses. The wrecking crew made life miserable for opposing offenses, but Texas A&M hasn't had a defense ranked in the top 50 in total defense nationally since 2006. That could change this year as new defensive coordinator John Chavis brings his pressure defense to Aggie Land. The John Chavis scheme has been successful in the SEC. Over the last 20 years as a defensive coordinator in the league, Chavis has been a part of 11 teams that had 10 win seasons and has been to the SEC championship game six times. When Chavis' Aggie defense takes the field this season, fans can expect to see a group that will try and dictate to an opposing offense what they can do. We want to be multiple enough in, in, in terms of what we do that we can create problems for the offense. Uh, we, we're not going to take the stand that we're going to worry about what they do. You know, we're going we're to force them to worry some about what we do as well. A good defense starts up front on the line. Texas A&M has plenty of talent on the defensive line. Inside, Alonzo Williams is back after starting 12 games at defensive tackle last season. Next to him will be Julian Obioha, who is making the switch this season from defensive end to defensive tackle. I played inside in high school a little bit, and, you know, when I got here, you know, I played on the edge a lot. And then when Coach Davis came over, he was like, I think you play DT. You know, at first I was like, yeah, at first I was like, I might not be able to do this. And then when I got into it, I started gaining weight and got a little stronger. I was like, yeah, I could definitely do this. So it was, it was really nice. Hardrick Walker, Zaykoven Henderson, and Reggie Chavis, who's making the move from linebacker to tackle, are all returners with playing experience. Combine that with freshmen like Daylon Mack and Kingsley Kiki, and you have a defensive tackle group with depth. We go up and down the, uh, you know, the roster. You know, we've got depth right now, and, 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 and that's also a coach's best friend because all those guys want to play, you know, and that competition, uh, you know, is, is, is awesome on a daily uh, basis. Those guys are going out and competing, and, and, and all of them want to see the field. 
When you move to the defensive end spot, the first name that jumps out is Miles Garrett. Last season, he set the SEC freshman record with 11 and a half sacks. The new aggressive defensive scheme should give Garrett a chance to put up big numbers again, but he also now has played a year of college football. Another year under my belt will help me a lot more than you know, a scheme. A scheme can only help you so much, can only put you in the right positions to you know, get the job done, make plays. But you know, just having another year of experience will help a lot for you know, defense overall. And you know, now that we're stronger, bigger, faster, and we you know, have a scheme that you know, puts us in the right place to you know, just make big plays, you know, things should be different. Garrett is not the only talented end on the roster. On the other side of the line is junior Deshaun Hall. Last season, he played in every game and recorded four and a half sacks. Sophomores Quaylen Cunningham and Jarrett Johnson both saw game action last year as well. This may be a young defense, but it could be very good. Obviously, we'll know when we play Arizona State, but uh, the, the kids have bought in. They're working their tails off. We, we have obviously a great scheme and great coach and Coach John Chavis, who's done an amazing job with our defense. He brings instant credibility and uh, uh, it's just exciting to see what these young guys can do. There is some experience coming back at linebacker. Otara Alaka, Josh Walker, and Sean Washington all played last season. A.J. Hilliard is back this year as well after missing most of the 2014 season after breaking an ankle in the opener against South Carolina. The Aggies added five linebackers as part of the 2015 recruiting class, including former A&M Consolidated Tiger Riley Garner. All of those pieces together should make a pretty solid linebacker group. Guys like playing fast, they, they like hitting, and I think uh, especially having Coach Chavis now teaching us all kinds of things that, you know, we, we never even, even, even would have thought of, I think we're, we're going to be pretty good at linebacker. In the secondary, Devontae Harris is back for his senior season. Harris and the rest of the cornerbacks will be key to the Aggies' success this season. The corners have to play well in John Chavis' system. The secondary may also be where the most interesting storyline is heading into the season. After playing running back at Texas A&M the last two seasons, Brandon Williams has been moved to cornerback. The biggest thing with him is we have to continue to develop him um, every day, and really his move to the secondary has really helped out the young guys because he's been an offensive guy his whole life, so you have to go back and start from ground zero. So that's really helped the, the freshman integrate into the system. There are some familiar names back at safety. Armani Watts and Donovan Wilson are both returning for their sophomore seasons. Transfer Justin Evans helps add to a position that Coach Terry Joseph feels very good about. He's a JUCO guy who was highly recruited. Um, he's really come in in January and absorbed the system and really has done a good job. Armani Watts, uh, a tribute to Coach Jackson in the weight room, has totally transformed his body. He's stronger, he's bigger, he's faster. Um, and, and getting better at the mental side of games. And then Donovan Wilson, you know, a guy who started the bowl game uh, and had surgery the day after the bowl game. He had nine tackles in the bowl game, but he's put on 20 pounds in off season. So that's three guys who can really go. And then probably the biggest DB I've ever coached uh, in Justin Dunning. Thanks, John. Most of the players that we've talked about for the past 15 minutes or so will also play on the Aggies special teams as they look to keep their best players on the field. Last year, Drew Kayser and Taylor Bertolet received all conference mention while the Aggies ranked among the national leaders in punt average, net punt average, and field goal accuracy. With experience returning, special teams should be solid in 2015. A&M led the SEC with an 87% success rate on field goals and hit all 59 of their extra points. That was with Josh Lambeau kicking. Now Bertolette will be kicking field goals and extra points, something he hasn't done since his freshman year. Very strong-legged. He's very experienced. And, um, and he does everything the right way. You're always going to have eyes on you no matter what you do, whether it's an extra point, a 50-yard field goal where you're competing for a job or not. I mean, you were always, we we're kind of always under the gun, so this is nothing new for anything I've ever been through before. This season, I just have to be the most consistent I could possibly be. Consistency is always key, and no one knows that better than punter Drew Kayser. As a junior, Kayser ranked 15th nationally and number five in the SEC with a 44-yard average. He registered 22 fair catches, had 22 punts that landed inside the 20, and 18 boomers of 50 yards or more. But he knows he can do better. I haven't been satisfied with any season I've had because I always know that I can do one punt better. I want to be more accurate. I want to be get higher heights. I want to get uh, you know, inside the 20 more. And, and there's a lot of stuff that 
I can improve on. He's got to consistently be able to drop the football where he wants it. His drop is, is ultra important. On the return end, the Aggies have a newcomer in Christian Kirk, who was the Arizona Gatorade Player of the Year in 2014, along with all SEC return specialist Speedy Noel, who is ready to break even more records this season. Noel had a spectacular first season and led the team in all-purpose yardage, punt return yards, and kickoff return yards, despite missing the SMU game. Noel had over 1,400 all-purpose yards, which is the fifth most ever by an A&M freshman. Coach Banks has high expectations for the Noel Kirk duo this season. With Christian, you know, he's a freshman, just like Speedy was last year. We gotta break him in. How do we get him in the game? When do we get him in the game? So that they can show us what they can do. Welcome back to Aggie Football 2015. A new excitement. Head coach Kevin Sumlin rejoins us to talk some X's and O's. And coach, we talked earlier about the stadium, and there's a, a lot of excitement surrounding this football team because of this stadium, but there's also a lot of excitement surrounding your team because of the hiring of three coaches that you brought in, including John Chavis, who some people think is a rock star. Well, they, yeah, he. He's had our number for the last three years. He's had a lot of people's numbers, and, and uh, you know, I think it was a great fit for him, a great fit for us. You know, he's, he's a guy that has a lot of experience in the SEC, and here recently at LSU in the SEC West, uh, was over here trying to steal players from Texas. We're over in Louisiana trying to steal players from there. So he brings not only a, a, a great uh, uh, defensive mind scheme and, and experience, but also a, a recruiting rapport in this area. So it's a win-win for us. And then you've got Dave Christensen, who used to be a head coach, who's coming in here to be your run game coordinator. Uh, obviously, you're putting an emphasis on being able to basically smash mouth football, shove that ball down the field. Well, yeah, we've, uh, you know, we're not going to change wholeheartedly who we are because we like to score points. We recruit to that. But uh, a lot of people will remember Dave Christensen giving us headaches right out here on the old cow field when he was at Missouri before he became a head coach. And, and uh, you know, I've known Dave for a long time. He's got uh, experience being in Utah, at Utah last year. We saw what they did, you know, as offensive coordinator, being able to go up and down the field on USC, some great teams in, in, in the Pac-12 South last year. So, you know, he, he brings uh, another attitude. Uh, some difference in the run game uh, and some head coaching experience and, and winning experience. And so, you know, a guy like that is, is able to not only coach the players, help us in the staff room, but also help me with some other things. Aaron Moorhead, a guy who's got NFL experience, you can't get enough of that on your staff, can you? No, no, Aaron's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for a great teacher. And here's a guy who, uh, you know, basically was, was not highly recruited, went to Illinois. Uh, all they did was win when he was there. Uh, didn't get drafted, and all he did was become a free agent and play for the Colts and win a Super Bowl. So here's a guy who, who has done it through hard work, understands the game, and, and really here is a great teacher, but can teach our guys not only the skill level to play at this level, at, at the collegiate level, but also teach them how to be a pro. He's been a great addition. You have uh, named Kyle Allen as your starter for the Arizona State game. What has he done in spring practice and then in August camp that has caused you to kind of come to that decision and say, you know, we want you to get us going against the Sun Devils? Well, you know, he, he ended the year on a, on a high note, being the MVP of the bowl game. I think that gave him some confidence in the offseason. Being here in the spring helped him. Uh, we talked to him about leadership traits and, hey, it's okay to speak up now. You know, that we're looking for our quarterback, a guy who touches the ball all the time. Hey, let's tell, tell these guys what to do. They'll listen to you. So, you know, he's got a better command of the offense, but more than that, he's got a better command of, of knowing what the defense is doing to him. He's more relaxed playing, you know, a lot more relaxed than he was out here against Louisiana Monroe when I thought he was going to throw up when we the first series. But he, he's a lot more relaxed, and, and, and by that, that doesn't mean he's not intense intense when he's playing. I think he, he understands things and, and the game has slowed down for him. We talked about the run game a little bit and obviously that benefits you in throwing the football, but you have some very versatile receivers that are coming back this year that I'm not going to say it's going to make his job easier, but he's certainly got some talent to throw to. Yeah, you know, and I've said this before, and whether it was Johnny, whether it was Kenny, whether it was Kyle, you know, whether you know, Kyler gets in there. It's, it's not about the quarterback necessarily. It's incumbent on the other 10 guys on the field and our coaching staff to make the system quarterback friendly. Certainly the guys on the perimeter are very, very talented. We put them up with anybody in the country. 
as far as uh, their, their talent level. So, uh, you know, you, you take that and, and, and a smart guy is going to utilize those guys and, and uh, uh, our coaching staff understands that and, and, uh, and uh, so do our quarterbacks. Uh, we're doubling back a little bit. We talked about the excitement surrounding uh, John Chavis. What's your gut telling you about how your defense is going to start out the season? Well, you know, I, I think uh, we can't go anywhere but up, number one. And I think the uh, first thing you got to restore is confidence. Uh, and, and I think John's done that. The scheme, uh, you, you know, and, and getting guys to play hard and believe. He's got a great way with uh, demeanor with our kids. Uh, he talks to them, not at them. He knows when to get on them. Uh, and, and, you know, we're, we're get back to playing, playing defense the way we need to play it. All right. We are excited to see how the season turns out. Of course, the Aggies are going to kick things off on Saturday evening down in Houston against Arizona State. Coach Sumlin, thank you as always for your time. That will wrap up Aggie football 2015, a new excitement. For John, Chessa, and Cody, I'm Daryl Bruffett. Appreciate you watching.